Whenever you play tennis, you're gonna be starting in one of two positions. Either you're the server or you're the returner. When you're the returner, you lose some of the control on how the points are gonna start. But returning can actually be one of the biggest assets if you can do a couple things clean. Welcome to today's Tennis 101, where we're gonna be going over returns. So when we look at returning, we're gonna break it up into a couple different categories. We're gonna look at court position, which is obviously where you locate yourself to receive the return. And we're also gonna look at body setup in terms of what we do with our legs, upper body, and our hands. I'm gonna start with the body setup because that's going to be the easiest one. When you are returning serve, you're gonna to wanna to have, if you're a two-handed backhand, you're gonna hold your forehand grip on your dominant hand, and you're gonna take your backhand grip on your non-dominant hand. What that's gonna do is allow you to quickly adjust for whatever shot comes in. If it comes to your backhand, all you would have to do is open up your dominant hand and twist and then be ready for a backhand. And all you'd have to do for your forehand is just let go. If you're a one-handed backhand, you actually have a little bit more variety of what's allowed. You can wait in a forehand grip. If you think that your forehand is the weaker shot, you're gonna wait in your backhand grip if you think your backhand is a weaker shot. And if you've got generally, Good confidence on both. I say wait in a continental grip, which allows you to switch to either pretty quickly. That's covering up all the upper body getting set up stuff. Then when it comes to our feet, what we wanna do is we wanna have a wide base, but not super wide because when we're returning, everything's gonna be very quick and explosive. Serves are usually the fastest ball that we would, we would be receiving. So what we're gonna do is be in about this position. That allows us to have a short, quick split step and go out. Splitting for returns is very often confused with splitting for baseline strokes. When we split on the baseline, we're usually going more up and down, but when we split for returns, we actually wanna split into the court, which gets our body momentum moving forward. So taking a two-handed position, if I was a split, I'd go in, which allows me to shorten up my swing and then continue my body weight moving into the ball. Now, when we look at court position, what I want you guys to understand is this is where geometry comes into play. A big mistake a lot of people make when they return serve and they're learning to return serve is they think that because the ball has to bounce between the singles line and the center line, that the good return position should be about halfway between here and here, which is true in one case, but I'm gonna to get to that in a second. As we get farther away from the service box, the amount of travel that the ball can have becomes wider. So if my opponent's serving down the tee or down the center of the court, the farthest the ball can usually travel is the center of the court. But when somebody serves out wide, the ball doesn't stop at this singles line. It could potentially go even further out. So if we were to look at the ball being able to go about this wide, the middle of those two locations is about here. So my return position, if I'm gonna be located on or near the baseline, is with my outside foot pretty close to the singles line. Now. As I try to be a little more aggressive or take time away and I wanna move into the court, I don't move into the court along this same location because that shot over there is the same distance away from me, but this shot is actually getting closer because I'm cutting off that angle. So let's say that my opponent can serve this wide at the baseline. They might only be able to serve this wide from this space here. So the closest distance or the middle distance from here now would actually put me a little closer to the middle of the court. So as you go to move closer into the court to return, if the person's serving a little softer, you actually wanna also move a little closer to the middle of the court. And as you back away for faster returns, you also move more to the side and keep situating yourself more on an angle to cover the ball getting wider and wider. Now using the forehand as an example, but everything also applies to the backhand side, we essentially have three different types of swings. We have a full swing, we have a shortened swing, and then we have the block. That's gonna be used depending on the quality of serve that's coming at us. So let's say I have a serve that's very easy. I can use my normal forehand motion, get fully set all the way back here, and then take a full swing at the ball. If the ball's coming at me a little bit more difficult, or a little faster, or a little wider, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to cut out some of the stuff going on back here, and I'm gonna set my racket smaller, and then still have the same finishing motion out into the court. That saves time, but because my opponent's ball is usually moving a little faster, I can feed off of that incoming pace and still get a solid quality strike. Now, if the ball is coming at 
you in an even more difficult way than that, and we have less time or more movement, then we go from even the shortened motion to a continental grip and an even tighter extension, which is called blocking the ball or chipping. If the ball is coming at you that fast, you can feed off the pace even more. And with an open racket face, you don't even need the lifting part of the shortened motion. So all you're going to do is go from here and just extend into it. Combining that with the court position stuff that we talked about and also the correct grips, you're going to save a lot of time when you need it. And you're also going to have the ability to execute really clean shots effectively when you're given extra time. So if I was to put everything together and a serve was coming at me, let's say I want to split into it, but I'm going to start a little further back because the ball is difficult. I might start here. I'd split towards the center of the court, big swing, and then extend into the court in any combination thereof. So to close this out, I'm going to do a couple of different examples with Emily serving to me, and I'll just talk us through and then we'll be done. So this would be my normal neutral starting position. And as you see, split in, small swing, and extend it. I didn't do the whole motion here. Same thing, split, small motion. She actually went at my body, so I jumped out the way, and I was still able to execute the swing. So now if I was trying to be a little more aggressive and attack the serve, rather than hanging out here, I'm going to angle myself in just a little bit more, and then try to take it from here. Great. And as you saw, because I was closer and she served out wide, cutting off the angle was only one step away rather than being stretched all the way out if I was at the baseline. So now to imitate the big pressure of somebody serving faster, I brought Emily in. And since the serve is going to get to me in a shorter amount of time, I'm going to give myself that space and I'm probably going to look to do smaller swings. So that would be the chip or the block return because I don't have enough time to even take a shorter motion here. I'm just continental and pushing it out. So now I'll back up even more. And because I backed up enough, that gave me enough time to still execute a pretty solid full swing with that extra time that I gave myself. But that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. Remember, returning is something that's not completely in your control, so you're gonna be forced to make adjustments based on what your opponent is doing to you. If they're serving fast, give yourself time. If they're serving slow, move up, try to be aggressive if you're comfortable. But no matter what, understand that you do have a degree of control on how you react, but you don't have control over how they serve. But as I said, that's gonna wrap it up. If you know anybody would benefit from this, send it off to them, and I'll see you guys in our next Tennis 101.